Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see how we can uh, create a client side web part using the new SharePoint framework. And we are going to use the new module approach for development. For the prerequisites, uh, you can see my previous video and the link I will attach that in the while well, I'm going to upload this video. So for getting started today what we are going to do is that we are going to fetch data from the SharePoint list and show it into a tabular format and for doing that first I have to create a folder and I have created a folder called as examples in this folder I am going to create a solution and for creating a solution I need to use yo at the rate Microsoft SharePoint uh, which basically downloads all the necessary package all the necessary javascript typescript uh, ui fabric react knockout anything whatever you require for your project to work and the necessary configuration and json file it downloads them and creates a project for you this may take more than a minute so let's wait for this to get completed question that is asked is to give a name to a solution so I will give it a name as examples and then it will ask whether you are using SharePoint online or SharePoint 2016 so you can use the arrow key and change it so I am going to say I am doing this for SharePoint online then it will ask you you want to create a folder you or you want to use the current folder or create a subfolder I want to use the current folder Okay, then it's going to ask you about the admin chance of being able to deploy the solution to all sites immediately without running any feature development or adding apps in the site. I'm going to say no. Then it is going to ask you what kind of component you want to create, web part or extension. Today we are going to see a web part. And what's the name of your web part? So the name of my web part is get list items. And if you want, you can give a description, enter, and we are going to select a no Java script framework, which is basic and it will help us to understand how the client side web part works. So click on enter. So now this is going to generate the web part and the necessary files that are required for it to work. solution is created so you can see that it created the solution and now I'm going to open this file and I'm going to use Visual Studio code you can use any editor you want so you have to type code space dot So now a file opens up and here you can see the configuration files where you can have all your configurations all the external uh, JavaScript jQuery you can specify it here then we have node modules where we can see the Microsoft libraries like the PNP JS and all office UI fabric office UI react and etc then we have source where we have web parts and you can add multiple web parts and then in web parts you have get list items which is the name of a web part and here we are going to write our actual code okay so to get started uh, first we are going to create interfaces so we, we are going to create two interfaces so i will not waste my time and and typing so I will just copy paste the code line by line yeah 
so what I have done I have created an interface called list customers which is going to hold the entire JSON data and for the properties I have created one more interface called ISP list customer item and that I'm going to use it here okay so I'll just paste it here so now we have two interface one for yeah so now our interface has been created now we required a function to fetch the data now you can fetch data using direct rest url or pnp js but in this example we will fetch data using the rest url and for doing that what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the function which i have written here okay and this basically returns a promise so yeah so i'm going to write a function in the my default class and that function is a private function and here i'm going to mention the my list name so it's nothing but ret return this dot context dot sp http client now this dot http client this is inherited from a library and for implement that we have to use something called as yeah we have to import that library and the name of the library is give me a second so this is the name of the library which is very much required and it is sp http okay so now as i have mentioned that library and here we are passing the basic configuration the headers and footers it adds default headers manages the digest needed for writes and collects telemetry that helps the service to monitor the performance of an application okay so yeah so let me just take this inside okay so what we are doing we are getting the data and once we get the data after that we are storing it into response list customer it is a response okay and then we are getting JSON from that and we are returning that okay so this is a, just a small function for fetching the data now what we are going to do is we have to create it one more function for rendering the data okay so now we'll create a function which is basically going to render the data okay so this is my function okay now this is a render list customer okay and we have mapped it to the interface isp list customer item okay and then this is a normal html that is created okay then for each items dot for each uh, we are getting the name and binding it and creating a table and then for sp list customer we are finding that element id and it's in html we are storing the new HTML that is getting generated okay so what you guys will have to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this div that I don't need and I'm going to remove this div from here and then I also do not need this all the divs yeah so div id is equal to customer sp list container and slash okay so now once this is done our rendering is also completed okay then we have to create one more function and that function is basically going to call our function get list customers i'll show you what is basically going to happen okay 
so this is our function render list data asynchronous way so it is going to call get list customer data okay so let's go here okay so let's keep our debugger here to see what is the response okay so it will return a json data and this json data value we are going to pass to render list customer and here we have mapped it to the interface right so that is why we are able to get the properties customer name customer address customer type and customer id okay so now this is done and maybe we can put a debugger here okay and then maybe a debugger here as well okay and then that's it and now you can call this function from here this dot render this data async and then that's it done so now your code is ready and now for run the code we can go to integrated terminal okay here in the integrated terminal for deploying and testing a solution in a workbench now what is a workbench workbench is a place where you can do your when you where you can test your web parts without actually deploying it to sharepoint right so for doing that you have to type gulp so this will actually deploy a solution to workbench and it actually does not deploy your solution to the sharepoint it is only available for the workbench so let this for the first time it takes time so we'll have to wait So by default it opens up in the when you run it for the first time it opens up in the your default browser which is your edge browser in my case so by default it opens up in the edge and then you can see that once it completes all the task and the gulp server which we had installed what i had shown you in the my first video and the link which i am going to attach in the description below so gulp basically helps in packaging and deploying all your solution together and once it is done and once i do a refresh here you can see that the request starts coming here right so once i do that and then when i click here and then i do okay like uh, what was the name of my web part mm, get list item sorry get yeah so this was the name of my web part i clicked here and i now you can see i can see all the data now i can just show you by debugging so you can apply your CSS styling and all and I will uh, take a demo of how to use Office uh, Fabric UI and make your CSS or UI similar to what Microsoft is providing us. So I'll just refresh and let's see how, how the data is processing and getting loaded on the page. are into this list and now when I click on F10 this is basically a promise so you can see it here it is a promise and the promise is still not fulfilled so let's click on F10 and let's come here Some 
mirror let's add it again get list items yeah. action f10 f10 yeah so now once the get list customer data is completed then we can see the response and now you can see the response and the data that is available okay now we are just going to take the value which is an array and send it to the render list customer function now here you can see it is an array and that is why you are doing items dot for each and for each item so if i type here items so we have this data right and so for each like for the zero with row we have the column since we have mapped it to the interface so that is the way it works and this way you can fetch data from the sharepoint list and display it into the web part so that's all for today if you have any queries regarding this then you can get back to me uh yeah thank you all i will upload this uh demo so that you can use this and if you have any queries